Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. I found this little cabinet at my local Goodwill. It was only $25, so for me, that is a steal. Even with the damages on the top of the piece, I knew that I could make this one absolutely fabulous. As always, inspect your piece well, clean inside and out with white lightning. After I cleaned, I noticed that this piece was actually still a little bit stinky. This is why I applied Boss and Clear. Boss is going to be your stain blocker for anything stinky, anything kind of smelly, anything that you think your stains might bleed through on your piece. So apply your Boss with a roller or brush. I only applied this to the base. Today's project is going to be based around this brand new beautiful transfer. This is the Chinostery transfer from the Bells and Whistles line at Dixie Bell. This transfer is going to arrive in brand new packaging. It's now flat instead of being available in a tube, which is great for storage and for shipping. So what's inside your little bells and whistles transfer? Well, every transfer is going to come with a information sheet with instructions, a small little tool that you will use to burnish your transfer down onto the piece, and then the amount of image sheets inside. This transfer has four beautiful image sheets. It's heavy on the blues and the beautiful birds. Makes me think that I'm going to do an ombre blend of blue on this piece. My handy dandy tip of the day is to choose your paint colors based on the transfer that you're going to use and they will match perfectly. So let's begin our little project. I'm going to start on the top of this piece. Since there were some marks that were kind of ingrained into the veneer, I did sand back those small areas so they would be smooth upon applying my gel stain. For the base of this cabinet, I'm going to start with in the navy, then moving in to vintage duck egg, and then in the middle, I will be applying cobblestone. Combining this pattern together before you blend helps you kind of visualize how things will look. To blend these colors together, I will use my best dang brush. My best dang brush has the ability to be used with water to really blend the colors into a smoky ombre effect. If you need a little bit more of a detailed tutorial, I actually did start painting the base of this cabinet live on the Dixie Bell paint page on Facebook. I am live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. EST on Facebook. After my paint had dried, I wanted to add a little bit more detail before I applied my transfer. So I came in with a stencil. This is a stencil from the Bells and Whistles line. It's Mylar, so it's a little bit thicker. And I like to use a kind of dry brush with very minimal amount of paint to apply a faded look. I'll be using Moonshine Metallics and Gold Digger with a small brush to kind of fade in that stencil detail to the front of the piece. Make sure to blot off your paint so you don't have a lot of paint on your brush and use a soft kind of swirly motion. This is just gonna really lightly apply the gold to the edges. I'm just working on that inset panel here on the piece. I moved kind of heavier on the edges into a faded center, and I did this for both doors on the project.
while I wait for this to dry, we can work on the top of the piece. Let's get into our no pain gel stain. No pain gel stain is an oil-based product that I like to use on existing surfaces. It can go right over top of existing problems, existing veneer, stained wood, painted wood, whatever you like. Be aware that since this is an oil-based product, it does have low VOCs. If you need to open your window or use um, a, a flow of air like a fan, it would be something that I would recommend. There is a slight smell to this product. I like to wear gloves when applying it and I use an applicator pad. So remember, the only sanding that I did on the top of this small buffet is where there were actual chips into the actual varnish on the top, just to smooth that area before I apply my gel stain. I like to always do my edges first, and after the edges are covered, I'll come in and apply my gel stain on top, working in the direction of the wood grain. My handy tip for you is to go a little bit darker to cover any damage that or on top of the piece, like any marks, water rings, burn marks. Use a heavy hand when you apply your gel stain so you're covering up those marks. Don't worry, I know you can see that small little sanded area a little bit more defined when I'm applying the gel stain, but when you seal it with a clear coat like Gator Hide or your satin clear coat, those marks just disappear. So for this project, I did apply two even coats of gel stain, waiting approximately 24 to 48 hours in between coats of gel stain so that it is completely dry and not tacky before you're putting on that second coat. I've even done this similar method on top of laminate style top dressers, pieces that are technically plastic, not even real wood. I can use gel stain on top of those and make it look like a beautiful stained surface with a brand new color. This is me applying my second coat making sure again that your first coat is totally dry, coming in with a heavy hand on my applicator pad to apply the gel stain that sits on top of the surface, darkening the area in the top of the buffet to give it a more modern look. You can apply any of Dixie Belle's clear coats to the top of your gel stain, or you can leave it as is, but since this is the top of a buffet, I always seal with Gator Hide or Satin Clear Coat. Now that my base is uniform, you can still see that mark where I had sanded back. The reason you still see that mark is because there is a difference in finish. Remember, smooth versus where I sanded back that damaged place. 
but from my experience, I've had really good luck using the blue sponge, lightly dampened with water, and then applying my gator hide over top. You're going to see that spot virtually disappear. You can add as many coats of gator hide as you wish. On this piece, I ended up doing three very light sand in between the coats to make sure it's nice and smooth. Using gator hide over top of that mark will really make it disappear and you won't be able to see where any of that indentation was located. Try and overlap your strokes a tiny bit when applying your gator hide to make sure that you get a nice uniform finish. Now it is time for the fun stuff. Here's that brand new transfer that I showed you earlier. I'm going to cut out all the images and then use painting tape to tape them up and kind of plan a layout. This is really important for me to visualize the final look of the piece. This also really helps me create balance so that my transfer is not placed down unevenly. It's a way to kind of make sure that you have the appropriate amount of pieces on both sides. I like my pieces to look balanced when I apply a transfer across the front. Transfers are very, very simple to use. I don't think that you should be afraid of them. I know a lot of people get nervous. If this is a problem for you, you can lay your piece down on its back so that you're not working on a vertical surface. That might help you get over a bit of your fear. But by taping up that transfer and working down with the burnishing tool, making sure all the images are adhered to the piece, you're good to go. I found this transfer very easy to use. You can see how it's bent around the corners and in around the little points on the design on the front of the cabinet. If it helps, keep a sharp knife handy to cut the image while you're working, but I like to just kind of fold it over the small bump and then work on each section one at a time. You can see the color of the image change a little bit. It's almost like it gets a little bit more white when it releases from that clear paper. It's very simple. Sometimes you'll see me use my fingernail, really pushing it in and getting it around those curved surfaces. Sometimes it's hard to get your finger underneath the edge when you're working from different angles. I suggest taking a piece of your scrap plastic and just kind of pushing it under the corner. It will help you lift the edge of the plastic and move your edge and your fingers under the piece where the transfer is joined. So for this project, I ended up using all but maybe three of the birds. There was actually still transfer left over, believe it or not, when I was finished applying it to the front of this buffet. Just continue to work along and layer your pieces, take breaks if you need it, and make sure that you get the exact layout that you're looking for for the design of your piece. For this project, I chose to seal the entire base in Dixie Bell's clear wax. I then came in with my black wax to add a little bit of shading to those inset panels. I also used a touch of gilding wax around the corners.
I installed the original hardware that came with the piece and I was finished. I absolutely love this one. I really think that it came to life with that beautiful bird transfer and that glowing ombre blend. I mean, it's a little bit of perfection over here.